what, what I would like to do here is uh, uh, complete this uh, problem number three, which was on one of the homework assignment, and it was in a previous exam also, fine exam also. So we have a structure like that, and uh, uh, these ends are clamped, these two extreme ends are clamped, and the middle point, the middle point, which is point A, is pushed down by some amount. And uh, you're asked to solve the problem, but every single problem on the exam says use symmetry to reduce the model as much as possible and use the most appropriate element to solve the problem. So you have to realize that this problem should be done with beam elements, not solid elements, in spite of the fact that the drawing indicates that it's a solid object that is going to draw. Also, because the two extreme ends are clamped and the middle point is pushed down by some amount, means that there's a vertical plane of symmetry. In other words, the XZ is a plane of symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model only half of this, and the dimensions are, are given here. So let me go to Katia. Uh, you have two choices. You can do it as a sketch, or you can do it as a wireframe, and we have discussed the differences. So uh, let's make that uh, profile, profile, half the profile of the beam, which I think looks like that. I'm going to put the dimension in just a minute. Okay, so actually let me make it make sure my job easier, make this coincident with that, although it's not necessary, but I uh, would like to do it. Very good. Let's put some dimensions. So you're told that this is, I can't remember, uh, that is uh, three inches. Okay, so this is three inches. There we are. You are told this height is 6 inches. So this height is 6. six. And I think this will be, because it's half of that 3 inches, is going to be 1 and a half. 1.5. Okay, let me just double check that. So uh, this bottom member is... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, this should be three, not one and a half. This should be th this should be three. This top one should also yeah, this should be three. Okay, so this should be three. Three. Okay, good. Now, exit. Because the cross section is circular, I don't need an orientation point, and this is okay. Don't forget to join them. Join the sketch. Don't forget to apply material on it. Material is made, is made out of steel, default proper, properties, steel on the part, okay, and now uh, we're done here. So file, save management, save as, desktop, new folder, I'll call it uh, problem 3, new folder problem 3. Okay, we then go to the uh, analysis and simulation, nothing fancy, generative structure analysis. And uh, what do we use a beam measure to do this, to mesh this? Uh, okay, point 0.2, that's a lot of elements, that's okay. And then we give it a cross section. We're going to circular, cylindrical. The radius, now I can't see, let me see for a second here. What does it say about the radius? It says diameter 0.25 inches. Okay, so radius is 0.125. And uh, the thing that you want to give 1D property is that sketch, and uh, that's it. Right, we can close it because there is no orientation point involved here. You can see that it's a cross section. All right. Now we're also told that this is this endpoint is clamped, and notice that that point here 
is on the plane of symmetry and the plane of symmetry is xz. So we have a rule as discussed in the class and in the book. If the plane of symmetry is xz, it does not translate in direction y, which is direction 2, and rotations are exactly opposite. That point. That point lies in the xz plane, symmetry plane. So it does not move in the direction y, rotations opposite. Good. Now, we then take this point and push it down by some amount. Now, I can, I can use the information that I have right now, but on purpose, on purpose, I will put another, uh, uh, oh, uh, on purpose, I put another user-defined strain here. So this point, this point, we give it a zero displacement in direction three because we want to change that, okay? Since we want to change that, we have to give it a zero, and then we change it. And that is done with the, once you do it, right here, see there are two restraints here. This was clamp, this was symmetry, and this was for pushing down. So now go to enforce displacement. You select this guy, and you give it a displacement, I can't, I don't know, what was it? Displacement of, uh, let's make this thing bigger so that we can see it. Uh, 0 0.001 inch, 0 0.001 inch. Okay, so 0 0.001 inch, let me say okay. Assuming that we haven't forgotten anything, and I don't think we have, so we're going to run this. And let's look at the front view. It's easier to see what's going on. This is the front view. You can look at the deformation right there, and you can animate it. See this? Let's exaggerate this thing further, so let's make this thing with the scale of 10 so that you can see it even. What did I do? 10, okay. What was it before? I don't know, what was the default? Oh, 400, <laughs> make it 1,000. There, you can see that, right there. And then you can animate it, right there. Now, what we like to know is what is the force needed to create this deformation. So it's very important. Let me deactivate this. Go here on the sensor, create reaction sensor. It says what is the uh, what is the react where wh what is the restraint that you want to find the reaction at? It is remember it's this guy downward displacement, and then you say update, and you're gonna get a tiny number, which is almost minus one pound. Minus one pound needed to move this thing by 0 0.001 inch, almost one, minus 0 0.697. Okay, now, the answer that you have to put in here, in this box, should not be that 0 0.697. It should be double of that, because that 0 0.697 is the force needed to move half of that structure down. For the whole structure, you have to double it up. So in here, you write it two times that number. Otherwise, you lose a lot of points. Basically, if you wrote that 0 0.69, you're going to get only one point out of five, because you're not thinking. You're just following the steps that are outlined in the book. 